First, what is a column store index? Well, put very simply, it's a high performance index created on a SQL Server table. Well, this is something that we're going to use in the relational database, typically in a data warehouse, but could be on any kind of relational table that we might want to use it. Column store indexes are implemented using a technology called XVelocity. This might not be familiar to you, but it is a new name for something you may be familiar with before. It used to be called Vertipack, and it's just a branding thing that's been changed to XVelocity. An XVelocity really refers to an underlying technology that Microsoft has developed. And this technology is really a set of algorithms and an approach that can be applied in a variety of ways. Currently, XVelocity is used in two SQL Server product features. The features are different, but they use XVelocity in somewhat similar ways. The first of these is the SQL Server Analysis Services tabular mode. You may also know this as Power Pivot, either Power Pivot for SharePoint, Power Pivot for Excel, or with SQL Server 2012, you may use this as the tabular mode of BISM models. And the second feature is the Column Store Index. Getting into a little bit more detail about these implementations, the tabular mode within Analysis Services uses XVelocity for an in-memory implementation. And in this implementation, all of the data is pulled out of relational stores or other data sources and is stored in an in-memory database that's hosted by Analysis Services. The Column Store Index is a little bit different. This implementation is what's called memory optimized. Data is put into this index and is stored initially in disk structures. And then as the index is used, it's pulled into RAM and cached there, yielding much better performance on subsequent queries. And this isn't that much unlike using pages of SQL Server tables that are then pulled into cache. The biggest difference is that with XVelocity, these on-disk indexes are going to be very highly compressed. Let's look at the differences between the XVelocity column store and the traditional row store that we are used to. In a conventional row store strategy, pages are stored on disk with sets of rows. So in this example, we might have three different rows that are stored in this page, and these three rows each have four columns. And that makes a page that's put on disk. We can compress data on these pages, but the amount of data we can really pack into each of these pages is really limited by the compressibility of the entire row. And then as we build more and more pages, we get more and more rows. But each of these pages is only compressed to the extent that the sets of full rows can be compressed. In a column store strategy, we approach the problem differently. Instead of storing pages with sets of rows, we store pages with full columns. So this gives us much better compressibility because we have a lot more repeating values in a column than we do across a row. So if we store a page with just all the values of a single column, we can get incredible compression. And that's what happens with column store using X velocity. We have pages with just a lot more data packed into each page. So as pages are loaded back into RAM, there is really more data available in RAM. And there are other optimizations that XVelocity adds, but this is one of the fundamental concepts and the reason for the name column store. To create a column store index against a table, we really use the same create index statement that we're used to with a modifier. So here we have the word column store. So we're creating an index that's a column store index on the table with a list of columns. When we execute this statement, the database will pull the columns that we specified for all the rows in the table and compress that into a column store index and put it back on disk. When we create the column store index, we can list all of the columns in our table if we want, and very often we will do exactly that. But there are some limitations, and these are the supported column types that we can include in that create column store index statement. The ones that are missing are generally the blob oriented and the very unstructured column types. If your table has columns that are outside of this set, you can still create a column store index. Just don't list those columns in the create index statement. So once the column store index exists, the way we query it is no different from the way we query the table. So here's a very simple query against a table, and this table has that column store index that we created. We don't have to make any note of that in the query. 
Once we execute the query, a query plan is generated and it will look at whether that column store index would likely be faster or not compared to just using traditional scans or incorporating other kinds of secondary indexes. If the column store index wouldn't make the query any faster, the engine will just continue and query the table as usual, ignoring the column store index. If the column store index would be faster, the engine will switch over and pull the rows for the table from the column store index rather than from the table itself. If there's a column store index, we can't update or delete anything in the table while the index is there. This is because in SQL Server 2012, a column store index isn't incrementally maintained. It can only be built from scratch completely by reading the rows in the table or partition. So no updates. But you have some options. The first is you can drop the column store index, make your changes, and then rebuild the index. If the table's not that big, this is probably fine. If the table is big, you probably partitioned it anyway, and you can use partition switching. So create a temporary table, put the updated partition rows into that table, add a column store index, and then switch that partition into the partition table. And the third option is you could use two tables. You could have a historical table with rows that never change anyway, and put a column store index on that, and keep your more recent rows in a different table that doesn't have a column store index, and this is where you're making your changes. Then when you query the overall table, use a union all. A little bit of a workaround, but it may work just fine in many implementations. So let's just go through a few tips about column store indexes, some background limitations and so on. The column order when you create the column store index doesn't matter. Put the columns in in any order you want. The engine's going to reorder them and follow its own ideas as to how to build the index anyway. The most common approach is to add all the columns in a table to the column store index. Particularly in a data warehouse environment, this is probably what you're going to do all the time. However, you can reduce the size of the column store index by specifying fewer than all of the columns. But if you then do query the table on columns that aren't in the index, the column store index isn't going to do you much good. The table underneath the column store index, it can have a clustered index, but it doesn't have to. It can be a heap or it can be a clustered table. But if your underlying table is going to have a clustered index, it's not going to be a column store index because there's no such thing as a clustered column store index. They're always a secondary index. And when you create the column store index, if you do have a clustered index, those clustered index columns are always going to be added to the column store index. You don't even have to specify them. So you might wonder, once you create your column store index, just how big is it? And you can query the metadata and system tables to figure that out. And it's a query like this. It's kind of intimidating, but it'll give you the number you're looking for. And this query is listed in the MSDN documentation, so you don't have to copy it down from this slide. Just a few limitations that you should be aware of when you're creating and using column store indexes. First of all, filtering is not supported. So when you create your column store index, all the rows in the table will be added to the index. This is usually going to be fine. However, if you do want fewer rows included, you're going to have to create a different table and index that table. Computed columns can't be in the column store index, so don't try to create a column store index with those columns. It's not going to work. Column store index is created only on tables. You cannot create a column store index on an indexed view. And sparse columns can't be included in a column store index either. You can't include sparse columns in your column store index. And probably most importantly, a table can have only one column store index. Normally this is going to be fine because you'll add all of the columns to the column store index from the table anyway. But if you did have an idea of adding two different column store indexes, that's not supported in this version. So finally, I'll leave you with some links to product documentation and to the TechNet Wiki. Both of these resources have a wealth of information about background design and implementation of column store indexes.